This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience to Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Korah. Here the God of Mormonism and his wives through endless celestial sex produced billions of spirit children. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there, Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Wanting the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter-skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Early Mormon prophets taught that Elohim and one of his goddess wives came to Earth as Adam and Eve to start the human race. Thousands of years later, Elohim, in human form once again, journeyed to Earth from the starbase Kola, this time to have sex with the Virgin Mary, in order to provide Jesus with a physical body. Mormon apostle Orson Pratt taught that after Jesus Christ grew to manhood, he took at least three wives, Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. Through these wives, the Mormon Jesus, for whom Joseph Smith claimed direct descent, supposedly fathered a number of children before he was crucified. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the Indians, who the Mormons believe are really Israelites. Thus, the Jesus of Mormonism established his church in the Americas as he had in Palestine. By the year 421 A.D., the dark-skinned Indian Israelites, known as Lamanites, had destroyed all of the white Nephites in a number of great battles. The Nephites' records were supposedly written on golden plates and buried by Moroni, the last living Nephite in the hill Cumorah. Fourteen hundred years later, a young treasure seeker named Joseph Smith who was known for his tall tales, claimed to have uncovered these same gold plates near his home in upstate New York. He is now honored by Mormons as a prophet because he claimed to have had visions from the spirit world in which he was commanded to organize the Mormon church because all Christian creeds were an abomination. 
It was Joseph Smith who originated most of these peculiar doctrines which millions today believe to be true. By maintaining a rigid code of financial and moral requirements and through performing secret temple rituals for themselves and the dead, the Latter-day Saints hope to prove their worthiness and thus become gods. The Mormons teach that everyone must stand at the final judgment before Joseph Smith, the Mormon Jesus, and Elohim. Those Mormons who were sealed in the eternal marriage ceremony expect to become polygamous gods in the celestial kingdom, rule over other planets, and spawn new families throughout eternity. The Mormons thank God for Joseph Smith, who claimed that he had done more for us than any other man, including Jesus Christ. The Mormons believe that he died as a martyr, shed his blood for us, so that we too, may become gods. Space gods from Kolob. Sounds like Von Dynakin or Battlestar Galactica. Well, we know it's bizarre. I, I know as a finite being, I can never become an infinite god. It's a logical absurdity. That's when I stopped believing it, but I couldn't get my wife to even talk about it. She had to divorce me and find uh, another man that was working his way to godhood or she could not become a god. Are you saying that the Mormon church pressures individuals into divorcing their spouses when they're not measuring up to the church's standards and also pressures them into marrying another spouse who is working for this godhood? There's no doubt my motivation in all of this stems partly from my own personal experiences. I look back on my own life seeing a bishop counseled me to divorce my wife, uh, seeing my five children whom I raised in the Mormon church pulled from me, and spending all these years just trying to reestablish those relationships. I know literally hundreds of families whose stories like this could, could break your heart. The curse began on earth when Cain the son of Adam killed his brother Abel. After the murder, according to the historical claims of Mormonism, Cain was cursed with a black skin as punishment, a curse that would be passed down to all of his descendants. The Mormon prophet Joseph Fielding Smith stated, because of Cain's wickedness, he became the father of an inferior race. The mark which was placed on Cain and which his posterity inherited was the black skin. Second prophet of the Mormon church, Brigham Young, had similar unsavory things to say regarding these supposed descendants of Cain. Some classes of the human family are black, uncouth, uncomely, disagreeable, and low in their habits. So maybe you're a little bit on the disagreeable side. That's a possibility. There's some interesting clinical evidence that suggests that one of the things that disagreeable people can do in order to facilitate their interactions with other people is to do people favors. And so what you might say is that you could start by acting like you care, and then maybe you could learn how to care through doing that, so maybe you could say, well, I'm going to do something nice for someone once every two days for a month and, and think about it a little bit and see, see if that changes you because, you know, sometimes you think yourself into change and sometimes you act yourself into changing your thoughts. And so that's what I would start by doing. Um, and, you know, you, you could also be more connected to people regardless of whether you care. You know, let's say that it would take you six months of practice or even a year of practice before you cared. But that's not so long, especially if you're young. So that's what I would say about that. Disagreeable and low in their habits, wild and seemingly deprived of nearly all the blessings of the intelligence that is generally bestowed upon mankind. The first man who committed the odious crime of killing one of his brethren would be cursed. The Lord put a mark upon Cain, which is the flat nose and black skin. An 
not only was it taught that dark skin was a curse, Young also taught that slavery was included as part of that curse. At least one woman we know of was meant to be forever bound to eternal servitude in the afterlife. This was the African-American Mormon woman, Jane Elizabeth Manning James. In 1894, she took part in a special ceremony prepared for her, which was meant to guarantee her spot as servant of the Mormon founder, Joseph Smith, for all of eternity. Brigham Young proposed some very severe consequences concerning interracial relationships, using his station as prophet to declare that his words were in fact the very law of God. Shall I tell you the law of God in regards to the African race? If the white man who belongs to the chosen seed mixes his blood with the seed of Cain, the penalty under the law of God is death on the spot. This will always be so. Mormon prophet George Albert Smith said, Intermarriage of the Negro and White Races, a concept which has heretofore been most repugnant to most normal-minded people. There is a growing tendency toward the breaking down of race barriers in the matter of intermarriage between whites and blacks, but it does not have the sanction of the church, and is contrary to church doctrine. We must not intermarry with the Negro. Why? If I were to marry a Negro woman and have children by her, my children would be cursed. If there's one drop of Negro blood in my children, they receive the curse. One of the most devastating blows to black Mormons was their exclusion from participating in crucial Mormon ceremonies that take place in exclusive buildings called temples. These temple rituals are vital to Mormons, as they are considered necessary to enter into the highest of three heavens and there be exalted as gods. To enter temples, participate in the ceremonies, or hold any position of church leadership, males must be ordained members of the Mormon priesthood. For most of the history of the Mormon Church, blacks were banned from this priesthood and the temple ceremonies as part of their curse. Apostle Bruce R. McConkie, in his book Mormon Doctrine, stated, Cain was cursed with a dark skin. He became the father of the Negroes, and those spirits who are not worthy to receive the priesthood are brought through his lineage. Negroes in this life are denied the priesthood. Under no circumstances can they hold this authority from the Almighty. The gospel message of salvation is not carried affirmatively to them. Negroes are not equal with other races where the receipt of certain spiritual blessings are concerned. As time went on, pressure mounted from the public and from civil rights groups over the church's positions on race and the priesthood ban. In 1978, Mormon prophet Spencer W. Kimball suddenly announced that church leadership had received a revelation from God that blacks would then be allowed into the priesthood. The Book of Mormon is considered by Mormons to be divinely translated scripture. It claims to be an account of ancient America. It also proclaims the dark skin of Native Americans was also part of a curse heaped upon them because of the wickedness of their ancestors called the Lamanites. The Book of Mormon in the passage 2 Nephi chapter 5 verse 21 reads as follows. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they may not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. And thus saith the Lord God, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people, save they shall repent of their iniquities. And cursed shall be the seed of him that mixeth with their seed, for they shall be cursed even with the same cursing. And the Lord spake it, and it was done. Second LDS President Brigham Young expounded upon the Book of Mormon teaching in this 1859 statement referring to Native Americans. You may inquire of the intelligent of the world whether they can tell why the Aborigines of this country are dark, loathsome, ignorant, and sunken into the depths of degradation. When the Lord has a people, he makes covenants with them and gives unto them promises. Then, if they transgress his law and break his covenants, he will put a mark upon them, as in the case of the Lamanites. In an official statement released by the highest authorities of the Mormon Church as recently as 1949, 
They affirmed the doctrinal status of the church's position on the black race. Quoting this official statement, it is proclaimed this is not a matter of the declaration of a policy, but of direct commandment from the Lord. It goes on to re-emphasize the impact of pre-mortal decisions, and as such it professes the priesthood ban on blacks is not an injustice. In more recent times, the LDS Church has tried to distance itself from the demeaning racist remarks and doctrines of its past. An article posted to the Church's official website in 2013 summarizes the Church's new stance. Today, the Church disavows the theories advanced in the past that black skin is a sign of divine disfavor or a curse, or that it reflects unrighteous actions in a premortal life that mixed race marriages are a sin, or that blacks or people of any other race or ethnicity are inferior in any way to anyone else. Church leaders today unequivocally condemn all racism, past and present in any form. Whether God simply changed his mind, or if the leaders of the church simply acted to appease public outcry, the church has now entirely recanted what was standard doctrine for at least 182 years. Mormon scripture and abundant revelation declaring dark skin to be a curse has officially been declared false. Race is an indicator of unrighteousness and a previous life has been professed a lie. The penalty given as the law of God for interracial marriages has been condemned. These are but deceptions, fabrications of lying, bigoted men pretending to speak for God. They led their church astray. To reverse the revelations are to deny the divinely appointed authority of these men upon which the foundation of the entire church was founded.